Now you see me. Now you see me. my wonderful friends, Jason Demacus, coming at you via the power of video, the internet, and consciousness. We are headed back across town as usual on a bright and early Saturday morning. It's not even 8 a.m. For those of you that watched my last video about early rising, you know why I am up and driving around this early, especially on a weekend. And just so you know, all of these videos aren't going to be me driving in a car talking to you. I record these sessions in batches, in large chunks of video that are hours long per week, and I edit them down and take certain parts and cut them. So most of what you've seen has been clips from me driving around. What you haven't seen is the stuff you haven't seen yet, <laughs> obviously. And that stuff's coming up. So rest assured, it's not just gonna be me in a car talking to you all the time about stuff. You will be getting other videos of me in my kitchen cooking things, showing you how to make shakes, smoothies, recipes, uh, workout videos, all kinds of more in-depth stuff. Um, so we're just getting started with these types of sessions. But The only way I can describe what I'm about to talk about is to do so under the pretext or the preface of 4D thinking, fourth dimensional thinking. That's what we're talking about today. So when we talk about fourth dimensional thinking, what I'm referring to here is nonlinear thinking. Thinking where your end result or your logic and your reasoning, your deduction, doesn't necessarily follow logically from your premise. So what, to kind of break this down, When we're talking about 3D thinking, which is our normal logic, what we call logic, reason, um, and just thinking in general is 3D thinking, third dimensional thinking. You know, just logic, basic logic. One plus one is two, okay. Very linear, you know, what well, we know what one and one is, and you put them together and you get two, that's logical. Fourth dimensional thinking, would be to say that one plus one is four, or one plus one equals two in some cases. Now I'm not saying that somewhere in the universe one plus one equals four. What I, it, what, what's difficult about this is I have to use bad analogies because there is no actual analogy to describe fourth dimensional thinking. Everything that I'm doing to try and describe something that is beyond our language, I can only do so within the confines of third dimensional language. So I'm making a model of something that exists beyond our reality by using pieces of the reality we exist in. So do me a favor, before we get into this whole fourth dimensional thinking, 4D thinking, what's 3D thinking, what's 4D thinking, I want you to do me a favor and below this video, I've included a link to another clip I want you to pause this video and open that clip in another window and watch it. It's about five minutes long. Just watch the whole thing real quick and then come back and resume this video. Pause this video now, go to that link, watch it, and come back. I'll wait for you while you do that, all right? All right. Some pretty mind-stretching stuff there Mr. Sagan was talking about, huh? But what he says saves us a ton of time and struggle. I'll let I just have Carl Sagan explain it so I can tell you what I'm doing. I'll take I'll take off where he left off. I'm gonna continue where Sagan left off. So if you can understand the concept of flatland in relation to the apple coming down into flatland, and people in flatland only being able to perceive that thin narrow slice of what is actually uh, something that has dimension to it extrapolate our third dimension and then think about what 
fourth dimensional phenomena would be like. All of a sudden, things like UFOs, ghosts, Bigfoot, all this paranormal stuff, it kind of starts to make sense if you consider that maybe that stuff is a fourth dimensional phenomena intersecting our third dimensional for a brief, brief period of time, just like the apple did to Flatland. When someone sees a ghost or, you know, an apparition or something that they can't explain with our modern science and physics, it's not because this thing doesn't exist. It's because there is more beyond what our science is capable of exploring. So these things, just because our science cannot detect these things does not mean that they do not have an independent existence in which they can come into our reality for a second or two. We can see them and wonder what the hell they are, then they disappear, they vanish. Just like the apple disappears in thin air. It comes through as a slice, it comes right into the guy's house, Flatlander's house, communicates with him, he hears a voice, thinks he's crazy. Then he goes and tries to explain it to his other flat friends. I was up in the air floating around, what is up? How do you describe up to someone? How do you describe color to someone who is colorblind, who's never seen that? How do you describe sound to someone who doesn't have ears? How do you even talk to someone who doesn't have ears? See, this type of thinking might sound silly on the surface, but in reality, what you're doing is you're flexing. You're flexing your consciousness. You're not just staying within your humdrum, you know, level, default, boring state of consciousness where you just assume that because humans have science on their side that we know that 95% of the world is figured out and the other 5% will solve itself because we have equations and laws that tell us it's so. I'm saying there is more than modern science because what we call modern science is a very thin and narrow, tenuous grasp on true reality as it actually exists. It's a damn good shot and it lets us deduce and learn and study and create awesome technology and medicine and advances and it's great for that. But it's not great for discerning higher level phenomena or consciousness in general because consciousness is non-linear. It appears to take place outside of our 3D world. It Consciousness itself, I would assert, is a 4D phenomena. It originates and exists beyond our third dimensional reality. You may or may not agree with that, but I would argue that the more conscious you become, the more obvious of a statement that is. The more unconscious you are, the more insane everything that I am going to say or have said this entire conversation will sound. The reason is logical. There is a large gap between someone who is unconscious and conscious. Consider this gap like a knowledge gap between a child and an adult. A child just sees the world as a large, vast system of interworking things. Some things make sense, some things don't, but at the end of the day, things are as they are. And the adult has a better grasp on why things are as they are and thus he's calmer, cooler, more collected and able to interact and succeed in such an environment because he understands it. A child understands very little but observes a lot. So there's a larger gap in between what he knows and what he doesn't know so he's forced to fill in what he doesn't know with assumption. And assumption is composed of beliefs which may or may not be true. And the accuracy of those beliefs will be as such as well. His, his beliefs may or may not be accurate. It's a crapshoot. He doesn't actually know for sure yet. What I'm saying is the more conscious you become, the more the world, the universe, reality, and everything that people question and assume is unknowable begins to make sense. And I'm not, I'm not asserting that when you become more conscious, all of a sudden you know things that people don't know. I'm saying that things begin to make more sense. You can still have an agnostic standpoint and feel that you know some of the larger questions are, are beyond our comprehension. And of that, I agree with you. And that's kind of what I'm getting at here, is we can hypothesize and test assertions regarding what fourth dimensional phenomena may be. We do this via our thinking. Synchronicity, cause and effect, synchronicity. These are all manifestations of consciousness interacting with a third dimensional rule set with our 3D reality. 
So my challenge to you, my friends, is to take a little bit of time and think about some ways in which you can stretch your thinking. Think about thinking. If you don't know what metacognition is, M-E-T-A dash cognition, Google that right now. Take a while and, and, and study that. It's a whole branch of study involving thinking about thinking. What if you started thinking about thinking about thinking? What if you started thinking about thinking about thinking about thinking? Add infinitum, go back into infinity. What starts happening? I don't know. Actually, I do know, but I want you to think about it for yourself. I think I might know, but I want you to do some thinking and, and come to a conclusion for yourself. And then I want you to get in touch with me and let me know your thoughts on this. This is some serious stuff, so take your time. No pun intended. Want... And until next time, live and choose consciously, my wonderful friends. We'll see you soon.